All right, well, I'm trending again on Twitter. Did you hear about that? I just saw that this morning right before we recorded, and uh, I tried to figure out where it was coming from, and then I figured out exactly where it was coming from. Well, again, it took a second because, again, nobody actually mentioned my name. It's just that then people automatically think of me when somebody says something. Hey, did you hear that somebody did something? Who, Cornette? That's it's the name on the tip of everyone. I'm on the tip of everyone's tongue. Can you imagine that? Back in the old days, it was a good night if I was just on the tip of two people's tongues. And now I'm on the tip of everybody's tongue, thanks to the Internet. Who says the Internet's a bad thing? I do. You do all the time. Yeah, and it, truthfully, it is. But normally, as I understand, again, how the Twitter thing works, for most people, you have to say something or do something or someone report on something that you've actually done in order to trend. But as I said, I trend just because people think of me first whenever anything happens. And in this case... Because I, I jumped on the Twitter machine last night just to see if I needed to retweet any of our fine YouTube clips. We've passed a milestone. More on that later. And I said, well, he's trending again. And I looked, and apparently our, our friend Dax Harwood of the best tag team in the world, the uh, FTR fellas, had tweeted a very uh, uh, terse response to Uncle Dave, Uncle Dave Meltzer, who had apparently tweeted something in response to some fan. So it took the fan's tweet, Uncle Dave's tweet, and Dax's tweet to Uncle Dave about Dave's tweet to make me trend, and I'm still trending now, and it's been, what, 16 hours have passed since this, no, 19 hours apparently here on the uh, on the updated tweeter information. So I just, if for the benefit of anybody that might have missed it, let's just go through this thing real quick. Because I've noticed that there are two different types of people on Twitter with two very different opinions, Brian. The people who hold up for Uncle Dave and his friends, you know, the cosplayers and the, the pretend wrestlers and the fun crowd, the fun girls from Mount Pilot. Well, they, when they tweet, they don't actually use capital letters or punctuation or spell all the words right, or they use some kind of bizarre shorthand. Possibly many of them are stenographers or court reporters. They've learned some other language to be able to convey to each other. But it ain't English. Apparently, they ain't too educated. But then all of the people who have the differing viewpoint and agree with the uh, fine folks like you and me, for example, they seem to have a grasp of the English language. They use capital letters. They use punctuation. I'm sure they use their left and right turn indicators in their cars because they're fine people. But the Daisy... Somebody named Daisy tweeted not even to, as we've mentioned, Uncle Dave. He was not mentioned in his tweet or tagged in the tweet. He apparently searches for people to argue with from the wrestling fan population of Twitter. This, well, hey, this one, Daisy's pretty popular. Uh, described as, I guess, Daisy would be a girl, but you never know on Twitter these days because they have, a lot of the guys have pictures of their favorite girl wrestlers as their picture. But uh, described as an unreliable podcaster and Jay White enthusiast with 1,272 followers. Daisy writes, with no capitals or punctuation, People who actually think the Young Bucks are burying FTR or are scared of them in some way are the biggest losers on wrestling Twitter. Now, this was such a provocative statement by a well-known commentator and personality, Daisy, that Uncle Dave does the quote tweet. That's what the kids call it, Brian, right? Where they put the tweet in the box and then they make their own misinformed comment about it that's correct and dave says actually they are people who learn from alex jones types and can't read 
<clears throat> insinuating, uh, obviously, first of all, that this was a, he was agreeing with the take that the young bucks aren't really burying FTR or aren't scared of them. Nobody would think that it had any sense. And he's also mentioning the fact that uh, those people that think that are illiterate when he's responding to a person that has never heard of capital letters or punctuation. And also, again, nobody mentioned my name. I don't think I look anything like Alex Jones. We'll talk about him in a little while. But that's when someone else commented to Uncle Dave. And by the way, did you remember 30 years ago, Dave Meltzer had a big, fluffy head of hair, and he worked out all the time, and he's jacked up and had the arms that a lot of people said he looked like in his younger days, they were approximately the same age, looked like Brian Pillman. You remember that, right? I remember hearing that, sure. He's gone from a guy that looks like Brian Pillman. Did you see him on CNN the other night? He's gone from looking like Brian Pillman to looking like somebody put a wig on a head of broccoli. <laughs> I don't know what fucking happened. But anyway, so Dax Harwood, uh, someone who had been referenced, even not tagged, but referenced in the original tweet, responded to Uncle Dave saying that people who think that the young bucks are burying FTR and are scared of them and jealous of them, they're just crazy. Well, Dax responded, Dave, with all due respect, fuck off. Like, in the most respectful and loving way, I mean that. When you decide to get two sides of a story, then speak on it. Thanks, dude. Apparently, one of the teams in question is not convinced that it's all caca. And actually, what do the kids say when, when, when the likes of an opposing tweet get more likes than a tw the original tweet itself? What is that? Are you? Is there a name for that? I have no idea. I think it's it's rated. Is it? Is, are you? Have you been? <laughs> overrated or underrated or whatever the fuck i don't know well dave's tweet to daisy got 379 likes and dax's tweet to dave got 4107 i think that means something to the kids but you know what it means to me it means to me that apparently dax disagrees in a public forum with Dave's dismissal of the theory that the Hardly Boys, the Cucamonga kids, have purposely, as we'll get to later on in the program, ducked that third match, switched themselves babyface to put it off, and avoided the opportunity to be professional and do the right thing for business by putting over the more talented and now more popular tag team instead of shooting another angle so they can incessantly get back on the trampoline with their play friends from the backyard. This is, I don't, what do you see in here? Besides a head of broccoli with a wig on it, Brian? I, I don't understand that. A head of broccoli with a wig, he doesn't have much hair now. Well, it, it still, he's got more than broccoli does. I was trying to be nice to him and not call him bald. A head of broccoli. I was, with a, I was I've never heard that expression before. <laughs> that his his nose is apparently on a land grab on the rest of his face and is taking over fucking property left and right. All right, let's let's get away from Dave's looks, but let's talk about. You asked me what this is. I can't speak for Dax or anyone else, but I think there's a few things here. One, I think it bothers people because. To put this out there, we have a much bigger audience listening to shows like this than reading Dave. And we're saying things that are really happening. And we're saying things and putting it out there and people are knowing about it. And Dave is the resource to put out the other side. And when you know a lot about what's going on, it's really easy to spot the spin and usually where it's coming from. And Dave dismissing shit that's real is either Dave going with someone's spin or it's Dave being ignorant of what's going on and 
quite frankly, I have a tough time believing Dave doesn't know what's going on. Well, no, but then, now there's ignorant and there's willfully ignorant. You can, you can just, when you, when, like, for example, when you walk Swami or I walk Harley and they start to take the poop, most of the time we'll whistle and look up at the sky and not actually see the ship come out of the ass. We have plausible deniability. We can even see the evidence later on that it's laying there, but we want to give them their privacy in most cases, except if we're checking for worms or anything. So you can willfully be ignorant that an act or a thing is taking place or happening. But um, you have to try. You have to do that on purpose. And here's the thing, a point I was going to make to your comment. Since obviously we're not the only ones who think this. We're not the only ones who see this. We're not the only ones who have commented on this or who believe this is a thing because I trended because as soon as Dak said that to Dave and people started picking up on this issue between them, they naturally mentioned me in either saying, oh, that fucking cornet, he's horrible with no capitalization or punctuation and usually a picture of their favorite girl wrestler on the profile. Or people saying, no, actually, he's right that we feel the same way and we see the same thing. And that's why, again, myself, I wasn't even there. I was not related to the original conversation, but I'm the first one people think of when they have this conversation because we're the only ones with the fucking balls to say the shit that's happening in front of us because neither you nor I want nor need a job with Tony or Hunter or fucking who's running. We don't need to kiss asses of sources. Days. We don't need to kiss the asses of sources either. And I think that's part of the frustration I've heard from wrestlers in the past. And to be honest, I've experienced it a few times where Dave will run with something and print it without going to the person he's actually talking about and just sending an email. Hey, is this true? Hey, I'm going to run with this. That's happened. I mean, it's never anything big, but it happened to me once with Yama pit fighting. It happened with me twice about videos years later. A fourth time won't count where he just misspelled my company name, but it happens to wrestlers where he prints, you know, let's say hypothetical wrestler Chris Jericho calls up Dave Meltzer and tells him something. That's the fucking spin that ends up in the observer. And unfortunately, there are certain guys that are protected over there. And a lot of them end up in AEW. But I remember years ago, remember Dave Shearer had the newsletter, The Lariat? Yes. When it first came out in 95, I, this always stuck with me. There was a letter in there, 95, from a friend of Dave's. Someone who was like, a friend of his, no problems. And it was just a little comment. Gee, it's interesting how every time Conan has a bad match, it's someone else's fault. <laughs> in The Observer. Why is that? And there were a few other things about it. Basically saying Dave protects the guys who Dave talks to frequently. And when it comes to the, whatever you want to call them, the Lollipop Guild, the fucking Divas Division, the Bucks, Omega, Adam Page, and anyone in their little group, they're good mixing with themselves, but outside of that group, having to deal with the wrestlers on the fucking wrestlers and everyone else, and go talk to Ring of Honor New Japan. Sometimes it's not just the wrestlers. No, they are unprofessional and manipulative and in some cases liars. And that has to be said. And the fact that they're either being covered up for or someone's just ignoring shit that's actually happening is, I think, what causes some of the frustration that you may have seen from Dax Harwood here. Well, and if 10 times the amount of people on Twitter agree with Dax than agree with Dave, then it seems like if Uncle Dave was a true journalist, as he reminds us so many times, because he went to journalism school, he was going to be a small-town bird lawyer, but instead he went for small-town journalism. You'd think he would say, I don't necessarily believe this, but a lot of people are saying it, but he doesn't recognize that at all, and they all want to put it on me. And they all want to say, well, he's the only one. Cornette's that. He's invented all that. He's come up with all that stuff. He's the only one saying that shit. No, actually, a bunch of people are saying that shit. They just don't have a podcast that reaches this many people, nor has their official YouTube channel just crossed the 300 million view threshold. 
Farquhar. So <laughs> apparently on the march to a billion, by the way, now we're going to march to a billion. That's Remember right. when we, 10 years ago or whatever, I had a quaint little march to a million. We were going to try to get a million view or listeners on the podcast in a year. A million downloads, I think it was. A million downloads, whatever we were going to do. Well, anyway, quaint. Now, quaint now that's a nice week. That's a nice, it, is it? Actually, it wouldn't be. No. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. That would be I a fairly right. good weekend, I guess, right now. But anyway, so... Just because I happen to say something doesn't mean I'm the only people, or the only people. I'm mean, There's two of me, and counting you. We're the only people that's, that think that. We're just the people that most people are listening to. Alex Jones. He thinks I'm Alex Jones. And old Uncle Dave is smarter than that because he's not a right-wing crackpot. He used to, after he would malign me about my wrestling opinions, he'd email me and say, but you have very valuable political points to make before I told him to leave me the fuck alone. He would thank you. He would send you thank yous for your yes, fucking commentaries yes. on the show. Yes, that needed to be said. Well, a lot of these things need to be said. Dave, I wish you weren't, weren't so touchy about some of them, but he calls me, and the only reason that I'm not pissed off about something like that is because of the <laughs> the complete shit show that was the Alex Jones trial this past week that fat fucking loud piece of shit on the stand in court I don't know if everybody around the world again folks if the people who are not subject to having to listen to the political fucking state of the United States with these right-wing conspiracy theorists and nutcases and the conservatives and the religious fanatics and blah, blah, blah. But one of their darlings, I think he was even like a, even further right than Rush Limbaugh and not as entertaining. He's just a whiny sack of fat shit. Alex Jones was hauled into court this past week. He has been sued for defamation by the families, I don't know all of them, it was a class action or a number of them, of the kids that were involved in the Sandy Hook school massacre. And they found him guilty. And he's going to have to pay a lot of fucking money to these people for what he's done to them. And I know, so this is one Stephen P. New couldn't get in on. I know he was salivating too, because everybody wanted to take this piece of shit down. What kind of, I, I, I've mentioned how severely repugnant of a pus-filled boil on the ass of humanity that you've got to be just to see these school shootings and hear about them and see the parents and hear what they have to say and hear the reports that the kids weren't just shot, that their bodies were blown to bits and their heads were blown off and they had to identify them by tennis shoes and fucking DNA because of these high-powered assault rifles and guns that, that these fucking fetishists and lunatics stockpile and want to keep selling and the fucking National Rifle Association, the world's largest sponsor of domestic terrorism, and the rest of these fucking criminal Republican assholes that are on the fucking payroll of the goddamn gun manufacturers Alex Jones, though those people are bad enough, but Alex Jones is one of these right-wing radio freaks that these fucking mental cases out in Montana in their fucking militia cabins listen to about the conspiracy theories. He ought to be the manager of Hulk Hogan's Beach Shop. I'm sure he and old Ronnie Howard down there would get along just fine. And one of the things that has been his, his calling card, the worst thing probably that he's been able to do to call attention to himself is to say that Sandy Hook and some of the rest of these school shootings were fake. They were phony. This is, this is how sick and twisted and demented that some of these fuckers are. Some of them actually believe guys like Alex Jones. You talk about propaganda 
You talk about propaganda and trying to make people think things that aren't true. Some of these simple-minded people that listen to this fucking guy actually believe that those school shootings were hoaxed, crisis actors. And they try to provide proof. Well, there's a picture of the kid that was supposedly killed three weeks later at the mall having a Cinnabon. And they try to tell people that the only reason that these events are reported is so the liberals and the Democrats and the sane people in this country can take your fucking guns. They make it all up. The media reports it so that the... <laughs> Actually, that would be a good idea if somebody do that. So they take these fucking guns. I don't care how it happens, but it's obviously not the case. And the Sandy Hook parents have sued Alex Jones for defamation and slander and making their lives hell. And he had to sit on the stand in open court and not only admit that he knew that Sandy Hook real ha really happened and he was lying on his show, not only did the judge have to admonish Alex Jones to quit lying under oath in court a number of times, but then, Brian, and this is where you and I both got the big fucking pop. In the discovery process, Alex Jones's own attorneys sent to the opposing counsel every text message and email and whatever the fuck was on his phone about anything, not just this case, but anything, for the last three years, accidentally. And when informed of that, did not do the official thing you're supposed to do to say, no, that's privileged information, just said, no, disregard that and we'll resend. After 10 days, it fell in the legal hands of the prosecution. And they fucking told him on the stand to his face that they had that. And it was the first he knew about it and his fucking jaw drops, and then they ask him, do you know what perjury is, Mr. Jones, before you answer this next question? Are you aware of what perjury is, you fat, slimy, conniving, greedy, avaricious piece of shit who has further tormented the parents of children who were blown to bits by lunatics with the guns that you and the Republicans and the right wings and the crackpots and the conspiracy theorists want everybody in this country to have? Do you know what perjury is, Mr. Jones, before we bankrupt you and send you to the special place in hell you deserve? It was quite a scene. I'd love to have been there in person with popcorn. What do you think, Brian? He said it, and I thought it. You know, you got your Perry Mason moment. I've never seen anything like this except on Perry Mason where they just nailed the guy and you see it. On the stand, you saw his face just drop. Yes. And hum and hum and hum and hum and hum. It oh, was like oh. an episode of The Honeymooners. Ralph Cramden was stuck for an answer when Alice confronted him about who left the door to the icebox open. Hum and hum and hum and hum and hum and hum. Let me stop you for a second. Forget about Alex Jones. What do you think his lawyer is thinking sitting there? Does he realize, like, I'm never going to get another client ever The again? lawyer was framed in the shot, and the lawyer is just staring at the fucking opposing counsel while Alex Jones' lip quivered. And it's, I'll just say this, and then we'll get back off the subject, but it's also interesting that every single time that they haul the conspiracy, and they've got him, by the way, on perjury, if they want to prosecute that, but he'll... They probably need to go back to work instead of jail to pay all these people the money that he rightfully owes them. But it's interesting, every time they get the conspiracy theorist in open court on the stand, they either plead the fifth or say, no, nah, I knew all along is bullshit. Anytime they get the Republicans about January 6th or any involvement with President Pig shit, they either plead the fifth or, yeah, we knew it was fucking all bullshit, all wrong, all illegal, whatever. The truth came out when he got divorced, because I remember I found out about him years ago. Someone I know started following his podcast, but it wasn't told me, like, oh, check out this political thing. It was like, this guy's nuts. You got to see him. He's so entertaining. That's how he got hooked in, because he screams and he yells and he does wrestling promos. That's when I realized, oh, this is a gimmick. This is a gimmick. This guy couldn't make it in radio. He came up with a brilliant gimmick 
and he's making lots of money. At that time, I remember listening and his advertiser was for seeds. Like in case the world was going to end, you'd have these seeds that you could plant and have some food. And I'm like, who's the audience for this? And then you start realizing, oh, there are people that actually believe this shit about some kind of nuclear bomb going off and you'll come out of your shelter with these seeds. It was preposterous. But then when you have to go to Walmart to get the fertilizer, who's going to sell it to you? Because the world just ended. But as things got crazier in the world and in America, he got more prominence and more people started buying his bullshit. But I always knew it was a gimmick. He got divorced. And in the middle of the divorce, his attorney, I remember, said he was a performance artist. He doesn't really believe these things. He's just, he's a character. He's playing the character of Alex Jones when Alex Jones presses, you know, on on the camera. He becomes well, a character. Know, see, you know what? And the, re these, the reason that Uncle Dave and the rest of these fucking, what do they call them? The, the kids call us the snowflakes. They, they, they like to melt. They wither under criticism. That's why they want to tell everybody, oh, Cornette's a gimmick. Because people like this Alex Jones do exist in the world, and it's not my fault that there's people stupid enough to listen to him. But I got news for you, Dave. You don't need to call me Alex Jones because I just call your friends shitty wrestlers. I just say that the Cucamonga kids ought to go back to the trampoline in the backyard. Alex Jones tells people that real existing children didn't get blown to bits. There's a difference there. And, and he did it for profit. And he did it for profit. He knew that's, yeah. that's the point. To, to, to know that you're lying for profit about something like that is even worse than the goofballs that actually believe it. But as I mentioned, Uncle Dave and anybody else said, hey, hey, Harpo, if you're out there fucking sitting there with your joystick in your hand, same thing goes for you. I'm telling the truth. I don't have to make shit up. And I don't have to be a gimmick because I don't give a shit. And the more that you can try to throw rocks at me for my opinion that I'm expressing that so many people agree with, the more that you come off like whiny little bitches, which is what many people that share the locker room with you think that you are. They just unfortunately need the job right now, whereas I don't. And Uncle Dave, you unfortunately need the subscribers right now, which I don't. So I'll just be over here expressing legitimate opinions with facts to back them up and a lot of people that agree with me for good reason. And you can be over there trying to compare me with rabble rousers and fucking conspiracy theorists because you're offended that I don't like your friends and I think they're the shits. You're doing exactly what you're accusing him of doing, Dave. And by the way, how, how did I get compared? Couldn't I? Isn't there a, a, well, I guess I've answered my own question. There is no left-wing Democrat lunatic. No, but, well, remember when the Bucks started calling you shock jock, uh, shock jocks, I was about to say. They started calling you a shock jock. All of a sudden, Dave started calling you a shock jock. Well, yeah. Like, because that's the that's... thing. There are multiple, I'm sure, now he knows who Alex Jones is, so that's why he's all of a sudden spitting out Alex yeah. Jones into the fucking thing. It's talking points from he gets his march. I wish I could even say Tony Khan gives out the marching orders. Everybody oh. knows he doesn't give anybody any orders. It's, it's the Cucamonga kids that are giving out the marching orders. And Uncle Dave, you know, salutes. But again, to compare me to Alex Jones, who are the right wingers in this situation? The Hardly Boys. They're Dave, the right Dave wingers. Dave was just on Jericho's fucking podcast again. You want to talk about right wingers? You want to talk about Alex Jones types? Whose whose family was at the insurrection? Chris Jericho. You can you can tie more right wing nuts to that side than you can to me, because all my nuts are left wing. I'll have you. I even, as a matter of fact, I ten years ago I had my right nut surgically removed and had somebody else's left nut put in just so I wouldn't have any right wing nuts anywhere on my body. See, your problem is you say the real shit you say off air, on air. And the problem is everyone else will say real shit in a text message or on a phone call. Or a lot of people will be surprised how many wrestlers are hiding on message boards. This is a fun story to talk about at a later time. But people want to hide. People don't want to say that. You actually do it. And like you said, you're not needing a job. You're not in that locker room. You have a podcast. And not everyone else could say it. But, you know, uh, I didn't do good with previous 
gambling spots here on the show, but I'll say this. If you ask me to put money on what stories will emerge in the next three, five years or so, you'll be hearing a lot of things about Omega and the Bucks and Adam Page and, again, the whole Divas division. I think you'll be hearing lots of stories about them that you'll be saying, why didn't I hear more about this in The Observer when it happened? But we'll see what happens.